happy that you're here today. Just to start off, tell us about who you are and what you do. Yep, glad to be here. Uh, my name is Gideon Brookins, and I am a senior technical writer um, at Extreme Networks here in uh, in RDU, uh, uh, Raleigh, Durham, North Carolina, uh, Research Triangle area. And uh, so, Extreme Networks we sell uh, essentially routers and switches um, to help uh, enterprise companies manage their uh, network. Uh, so, speeding up the network, um, you know, managing and analyzing, doing some security things. Uh, so, I write the documentation. I was initially hired on uh, a couple of years ago to do the hardware for our uh, flagship Extreme Exos uh, switches and routers. And uh, so I was doing installation manuals, um, quick reference guides, so the, the guides that would be printed uh, and shipped with the, with the switch. Uh, but I just recently transitioned to the software side of documentation. Uh, so I'll be doing uh, command references and uh, user guides. Uh, so uh, doing a little bit of uh, uh, code uh, capturing and, and things like that. So uh, been doing the technical writing, I wanna say, Getting close to 10 years, not quite, um, but uh, yeah, so around nine years and um, went straight out of uh, undergrad to grad school uh, at NC State for technical communication, the master's program, and then uh, secured a position out of grad school. And how did that transition occur in order to secure that position? So were you already interested in technical communication? Did you know that was something that you want to do? Or was it someone saying, hey, like, I think you'd be good at this? Yeah, um, my transition happened uh, kind of both ways. It was um, kind of declaring my major in, in undergrad. So I think that happened probably my junior year. And uh, I always kind of gravitated, gravitated toward English, and but didn't really know anything about professional communication or uh, professional writing. Um, but I went to undergrad at UNC Wilmington, and there was a professional writing concentration uh, in the English department. And I said, you know, I'm not really interested in lit or uh, creative writing as much, uh, but this professional or this technical writing um, seems a little bit interesting. So let me check that out. And um, also with the help of one of my undergraduate advisors, um, she said, you know, I kind of had a knack for uh, some of the, the writing that, uh, you know, obviously was more technical and um, remediation, you know, changing a standard essay to uh, to a video essay or something like that. And so I kind of went along with that and but didn't really want to know what I wanted to do after undergrad. So I was kind of looking around, hey, maybe I'll go, you know, keep going to school and I uh, found two programs and uh, ended up at North Carolina State. Uh, so I came back home actually uh, to Raleigh, North Carolina. And uh, yeah, that so that program had a lot of history. I think it's been around since the nineties. Um, it really prepared me, uh, just for, you know, kind of the theory of, of technical and, and scientific writing. Yeah. And then I got a, a co-op at IBM. And I think a lot of, a lot of folks kind of take that path. A lot of folks that I know in this industry, at least locally, uh, end up working for IBM at, at some point. And, uh, so that kind of prepared me professionally. And then, you know, came time to, so that was, a, I was in there full time for, for two years, that program. And, uh, you know, looking for, looking for a job in the area and thankfully got one at uh, Techelec, uh in the RDU area. And then, so thankfully uh, was hired on there as an entry level uh, technical writer. And then uh, Oracle came in actually and acquired Techelec a year later. So I ended up at, uh, at Big Oracle. And so that's kind of how the transition started, but yeah, straight from undergrad found that I was good at it and enjoyed it and uh, through grad school and then getting the first full-time position. So along this way, it seems like one of the ways you're able to ensure your success in the technical writing, like career growth and journey is that you kept reaching for, you know, better and new positions. Mm. And are there any other steps that you feel like uh, you took that really helped you grow your career? Yeah, certainly I would say, um, you know, the steps that, that I took to help me grow is, uh, you know, putting myself in uh, maybe an uncomfortable position, uh, you know, raising my hand if uh, if a co-worker is taking a vacation or something like that, saying, hey, 
I'll, uh, you know, I'll make sure your stuff is, is good. Or if you have some deadlines, I'll help out. Um, so making my, you know, I have to make myself available to my team, uh, and, you know, volunteering for other assignments. Uh, you know, if, if, uh, somebody's leaving or you, uh, this is basically what I did in my current position, a, a coworker left and I raised my hand and was like, Hey, I want to take over this position. Um, it was a lateral move. Um, but it was uh, a move with more visibility, uh, moving from hardware to software. So I think being adaptable um, and you know volunteering for different opportunities to kind of show not only your coworkers that you're a team player, but you know show your your manager, your, uh, whoever whomever you report directly to, to um, you know let them know that you are willing to continue to put yourself in the spotlight and uh, continue to grow in that way. Yeah, and I love that you talk about just the idea of making yourself more visible to your team members. Mm -hmm. So they understand like, hey, you know, if I need to take a break, you know, you can help me here. Or if I need to go and do another task, then you can go and fill in over here. And just knowing that they can use you as a resource, because that's ultimately, you know, why you're there. Absolutely. And I think that in itself is its own skill. And, and talking about skills, do you have um, some tangible skills that you can think of that have really helped you along the way of your technical writing journey? Yeah, I think um, certainly uh, be over communicating, um, especially now that we're all virtual. And, you know, for the most part, you can do a lot of, you know, the things that we do as technical writers virtually or from home. Um, so being able to over communicate um, with both your, you know, your SMEs, uh, your manager, your coworkers, um, and, and figuring out how other folks like to be communicated with. Um, you know, I think you're, if I'm, if I'm new here, um, I want to kind of establish a good relationship with some of the, you know, the engineering folks that I'm working with. And that means, uh, understanding how they like to both give feedback and how they like to, you know, be presented with questions. Um, so I think that's a really valuable skill is just to be able to understand how you can effectively communicate with different folks. Um, and then and in addition, I mean, there's so many uh, resources out here. I'm currently uh, in a remote uh, UX design uh, certificate program out of uh, UC San Diego. And uh, so that's 100% remote. I think it's been around for a while. Um, so I'm learning some, you know, a different type of writing. Um, obviously UX design, um, so more user focused. And uh, so that's, I think, another valuable skill that I'm planning on bringing to my company here. Uh, and so we have a documentation page and, you know, what kind of, uh, what's the user experience? What are our customers seeing? Um, what are their pain points? What kind of things can we approve, uh, approve upon? So I think um, there are just a, a lot of different skills in the, in the whole, you know, technical communication realm um, that you can have access to. And hopefully, uh, you know, if you have a company that supports you, uh, you know, might be able to throw some funds your way to help with that uh, professional development. I think it's, it's, a, it's a good thing to kind of see, you know, what other uh, tools you can add to your, to your toolbox. That's awesome to hear. Yeah, I think it's so important to have that continued learning and also in fields that complement what you already do. And Absolutely. those can also be like new career journeys down the line, which is just great. Just keeps you open for possibilities. And if someone's looking for something very, very specific and they're looking for a technical writer now with a strong background in UX, they're going to be like, where do I find this person? And then there you are. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's so, good. I, uh, I appreciate, you know, the ability to kind of keep learning. It's different. You know, I, I never thought I'd be back in school. Um, but you know, it's, I'm, I'm learning some really good things, uh, even, you know, some, some front end coding, um, you know, learning about what the user experience is when they go through some of the things. And it, it definitely applies to the things that we're doing for the documentation and, and technical writing, because uh, it's, it's still about the user going through their own journey and, um, and, you know, completing tasks. And it's a, an important part of both technical writing and um, user experience writing. Talk to us a little bit about the tools that you really enjoy within the technical writing space. I know that there are a lot of tools out there, but what are some that have really helped you? Let's see. Um, 
the, the one that comes to mind is uh is Snagit. Um it's a uh a graphic uh, manipulation program. Um we have a we have a license here uh, at my company and so I work with a lot of graphics and um you know the big names are Adobe Illustrator and Photoshop. Um but sometimes you know Photoshop and Illustrator can be um a little too daunting uh, of a learning curve and you know, snag it gets the job done. Um, you know, uh, screen capture, you can do uh, both video and uh, image screen capture. You can uh, put captions. So we do call outs um, with, you know, the different uh, ports on our on our switch. And uh, yeah, it's, it's easy to, to manipulate images and it's really been helpful. We have uh, graphic artists um, that are, you know, that we contract out, but for the most part, uh, I've been able to do a lot of the the graphic uh, manipulation myself because the tool is so powerful. Um, so it's it's certainly high up on my list as far as you know being able to add add things to the documentation that I otherwise would have had to have someone else do. Yeah, that's great to hear. I think you know it reminds me of the first time that I learned inspect element where you just change things on a web page and mm -hmm. you can learn you can act like you're a professional designer without being a professional right. designer and people are like wow that's incredible you can do that and you're just like yeah you know more people should adopt a lot of these things because it just helps your communication tenfold and it doesn't take too much time to do it either um, now this may seem a little bit like a personal question but mm -hmm. you seem pretty happy at the work that you do so i want to ask you for a lot of people who are looking to get in technical writing it's going to be their first job with the people watching mm -hmm. this video you know, what goes into picking a technical writing job that you'll be happy at? Um, yeah, so I've actually recently had to interview a, a couple of folks that we brought onto the team and uh, ask them a very similar thing. Like, what do they look for? Um, what do they look for in a, in a technology company? And I think that kind of, um, that also can speak to what you would look for as a technical writer in a technology company. Um, and, and you want to make sure that the company is, is doing well um, you don't want to get to a place where um, they're, you know, they're not having, they don't have a lot of projects for you to work on, because um, then you can kind of fall into a little bit of a, a, a lull. You want to ensure that the company is growing, uh, so that they do have projects for you to work on. Um, but if you know, I think if it's if it's your first time, if it's your first job, then you know you might just be happy with uh, just just landing anywhere. Um, you know, so so if that's the case. Um, you want to be part of a team. Uh, you don't want to go into a, a place where the, you're the, the only writer or, you know, or there's not a lot of support. So I think being part of a team, if it's your first uh, foray into technical writing, is a big help. You'll learn a whole lot. Um, in, my, in my experience, generally being one of the younger uh, technical writers. So there's, there's you know, a lot of senior uh, individuals who have been at this a while and they can help you, uh, help you grow in your career. Um, yeah, so I think ensuring whomever you talk to uh, as far as the hiring manager, um, what's the team environment like? Is there a lot of support? Um, you know, am I going to get um, feedback from some of my coworkers and things like that? Um, I think that's probably one of the most important things is um, being able to be supported uh, in your first in your first go round. Yeah, I think having like a good mentor and people that can really bring you up make all the difference. Like if anybody's ever had a job with someone who can't help level them up, it's a really terrible feeling. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we're all in, you know, we're all in this together. We're all working on, even though you're not working on the same project, you're all part of the same, you know, whatever you call it, tech pubs or uh, here at Extreme, we're information development. Um, you know, so whatever the uh, department that you're under, uh, you're all working together. You're all trying to accomplish the same things as far as uh, making sure your customers experience the documentation in the best way possible. Um, and so, you know, there's different seniority levels and uh, as long as you're, you know, your coworkers are, you know, team players, I think uh, you'll, you'll be in a good situation. And Gideon, where do you see the future of technical writing going? We have fast growing industries like software and then we have new tools that are coming out. I'd love to hear your thoughts um, on the on the landscape. Yeah, I think the um, I think we have a good uh, a good horizon in front of us. Uh, the agile you know development is is kind of picking up steam. It's, it's been it's been around for a while. Um, 
but now you're bringing in the, the technical, the documentation um, into the agile, you know, the scrum meetings and things like that. Um, so being able to turn around documentation pretty quickly um, is certainly a valuable skill. Um, so that, that agile uh, push is, is definitely going to be um, definitely going to be good for for technical writers to to understand and kind of get comfortable with. Um, and then I think there's a lot of uh, video initiative push. So you know, learning different programs like uh, Camtasia or some even some open uh, open source software, um, and you know, being able to do voiceovers. So get yourself a nice mic uh, like I have. Um, you know, and you know, soft editing. So post production editing and, and even in Camtasia, I think um, folks really enjoy just small samples of uh, walkthroughs or you know this is how you uh, do some of this. You can change some of the documentation to fit smaller scale projects. Um, if you have physical um, hardware, you can do an unboxing. I think people really um, really gravitate toward those. And then I think uh, walkthroughs. Um, you can do some guided walkthroughs that kind of helps the, the, the customer uh, complete their task and then, um, you know, possibly guide them through additional tasks or some, um, some other similar uh, uh, items that they might be interested in. And I think that push to, to the virtual walkthroughs uh, for, with the documentation is probably going to be um, coming, coming to a head pretty quickly. Yeah, that's a very good point. Um, I do think that those video editing skills are so helpful and more people need to have a little bit of video editing can go such a long way. So like you don't have to be able to make anything crazy, but mm -hmm. just being able to take even like an interview like this and just sharpen it up a bit. So, yeah. yeah. And technical writers, when they get into their first job, they often face a lot of hurdles. And you had sort of alluded to this in different ways where uh, you want to make sure that you're a part of a team, that you have good communication with your team members. But if you can expand on it a little bit more on the hurdles that they may face as well as how to solve them, you know, that would be great. Yeah, well, I think one of the biggest ones that comes to mind is just the time difference, uh, depending on you know where your team is located, um, especially for all, uh, for all working remotely, at least we are now. Um, you know, who knows if, if or when you'll go back into the office. Um, but, you know, a lot of teams in India, um, guys, we've got the hardware team in Taiwan. And, and so that, you know, the communication barrier there, uh, the time difference is one of the biggest hurdles. Um, and, you know, the kind of the way you overcome that is um, first, you know, being aware of the time difference and uh, knowing that, uh, you know, tempering your expectations that, you know, you're not going to get an immediate response if you send something at, uh you know, 10 a.m. Uh, U.S. time, and you're sending it to someone in Taiwan. Um, so that's one of the, the biggest things. Uh, and to be able to be flexible, uh, uh, one of the benefits of work from home is that, you know, your computer is here. And so even if you get an email at, at 9 p.m., um, you know, you might you might check it and respond if it's, if it's uh, you know, needed or, you know, kind of an emergency thing. Um, so being responsive. I think is is one of the big one of the big things. Uh, no matter when, uh, when you're communicating with someone, and and then sometimes it's difficult to get responses from folks that you need, uh, you know, feedback from. So some engineers are very busy, and uh, it may take them a couple of days to get back to you. But I think again, understanding how they like to be communicated with, um, try to get everything that you need from them in one email or one message. Um, Sometimes, yes, we even do uh, uh, call, call people on the phone, um, but understanding that uh, they might be busy and understanding how to uh, gently nudge them, uh, say, hey, any update on this? Uh, I think it goes a long way. Um, you know, they're not being pussy, pushy, but you're just trying to get your, uh, get your job done and they're trying to get their job done and, um, again, working on the same team. So, um, yeah, just being able to, understand how to effectively communicate and uh, you know how to push for things that you might need some information from agreed i feel like it's such a big part of it is just being proactive if you're not proactive then people are just going to assume that you know you're not working <laughs> absolutely it, yeah it's part of your job to make things happen and again like you had referenced 
allowing people know, enabling people to know to when you'll be available. You know, if you have something that you regularly do every day, let them know that you do not communicate during a certain time block mm-hmm. and let them know, you know, what time do you usually wake up and start working? What time do you usually go to bed? So that way people aren't caught off guard and they're like, why isn't this person responding to me? Then yeah. having those expectations helps so much. Um, yeah. There's, I mean, there's tools and we have, we use Microsoft teams and, um, but before, actually, I don't even remember what messaging we used before. Um, but, you know, you can even have different groups. So, you know, information development for us, um, we have our own team's channel. So if there's anything that the whole team needs to see, uh, you can write in that channel. Um, you know, you can put your away message, you know, BRB or, um, you know, off to the dentist or something like that. Uh, and then even in your, your calendar on your email, um, you know, ensuring that you put in, if you're going to be away or, you know, something like that or on vacation, uh, out of office, things like that, you know, you know, standard, um, you know, etiquette and, and protocol for just, you know, being a professional and, and being responsible. Um, it goes a long way. So true. And before we hop, do you have any more advice for technical writers that you can think of? Yeah. Um, I, I think being adaptable to change, um, I think in, in an information technology field, there's acquisitions, um, and with acquisitions, some uh, some roles become redundant, and so you know, you might see some coworkers come and go. You yourself, um, you know, might be uh, might be let go. But I think being resilient and and being adaptable to that, um, you know, if you're one of the ones who uh, fortunately was able to keep your position, um, I think the worst thing you can do is is have remorse or or guilt for you know, not being cut. Um, I think it shows that um, you were valued and, uh, you know, the work that, that you do is, is still important. And, um, you know, you have more visibility. And so that could be an opportunity to uh, not only continue to grow, um, you know, on, on a personal matter, but say, hey, you all determined that I'm, I'm valuable. Um, maybe we can talk about, uh, you know, the conversation thing. I think it's also, you know, still important to fight for your, um, you know, your market, your market value, you know, everywhere you go, um, continue to have ongoing conversations with your manager. Um, when you continue to progress, take on more responsibility. Um, you know, what does that look like in terms of, um, you know, conversation and, and maybe merit increases and things like that. Um, so yeah, continue to fight for uh, yourself and, and your professional development. And uh, I think, you know, if there are many, there are many places to work and, uh, you know, many companies doing lots of things, lots of fun projects. Um, that's the good thing about technical writers is that, you know, it doesn't matter where we work. We can always find uh, beauty in some of the products and, and services that we, um, that we sell and, and develop. So there's a world of, uh, of, uh, products and, um, you know, different things that we can do. And I think, uh, it's a good field. It's a fantastic field actually. Um, and anyone who wants to, who wants to join more than welcome. Awesome. Well, Gideon, thank you for being here today and doing this interview with us. I really My appreciate pleasure. it. Mm-hmm. And thank you to everybody who's watching and yeah, and rock and roll from there. All right. Appreciate it.